several decades ago, almost all countries in ASEAN experienced colonialism. But only one country in ASEAN or Southeast Asia has never tasted the bitterness of colonialism. Hello, Thailand. Many reasons have been postulated for the non-colonization of Thailand. But two reasons are more reasonable and provable. The first reason is that Thailand served as the intersection or buffer zone between the leading powers in the world during the period. In history, it should be noted that Thailand used to be called the Siam Kingdom. For several centuries, there were heavy wars between England and France, but these battles usually take place in foreign lands, never in their homelands. During this period, they were colonizing different Southeast Asian countries. While England dominated the land of Burma, now Myanmar in the West, France took over Eastern Laos, Vietnam, and Cambodia in the East. Afterward, England and France wanted to take over Siam. Siam is a vital place for England as they had a great influence on the shipping trade going on in Bangkok. Although there were many arguments over the Siam territory, a diplomatic agreement was finally reached between these two superpowers on using Siam as the buffer zone between them. In short, Siam became a buffer zone between the French Indochina and the British. As a consequence, the Siam Kingdom had to give up some of the territories under its control. Interestingly, in World War I, Siam cooperated with England and France against Germany, Austria, and Hungary. In this way, Siam received support from England and France, thereby minimizing the chances of being colonized by Europe. The second reason is how the king of Siam skillfully strategized the kingdom by altering their political system. Due to the location of Siam, the Siamese political leaders had been able to study why and how the colonial masters were taking over other countries. Generally, the colonial superpowers usually use civilization and democracy as their reasons for colonizing a nation. They would purportedly bring civilization and democracy to backward and oppress individuals by taking over their nations. Having known the excuses for colonization, the leaders of Siam changed their political system to look like the European political system. Of course, this change led to a huge nation-building project that brought lots of transformation to Siam. Foremost, the Siamese royals noted how the Europeans focus on topographical knowledge. These Europeans would utilize maps to demarcate different territories and borders. If a nation did not have well-defined borders, they would take advantage of her and claim lots of her lands. Therefore, the Siamese leaders made a map of their land. As a result of this, they already defined the borders of their territory. Hence, it was difficult for the Europeans to use topographical knowledge as an excuse to take over their land. Similarly, the concentration of power was implemented to prevent colonization. King Rama V, or also known as King Chulalongkorn, a Siamese king, noted that the Europeans also used the concentration of power as an excuse for colonizing. The Siamese political system, or usually called as Mandala system, allowed the king to rule over the whole nation with lots of local rulers under him. However, the king didn't have any real power over some of the areas as they were majorly self-governed. Chula Longkor noted how this could enable European militaries to take over the Siam Kingdom. So, he formed the first ever professional army of Siam. Although the army never fought against the European militaries, it played a key role in the non-colonization of Thailand. With the help of the Siamese army, Chula Longkor took power away from the local rulers. Resultantly, powers were centralized in the capital city of Bangkok. 
this action also led to the adoption of the Thai language and gave more powers to the Siamese kings. For that reason, the European powers felt that the Thai nation is already a politically savvy and centralized state. And then why it is important that Thailand was never colonized? First, maintaining the power balanced. The location and geography of Siam were perfect. Siam was the entrance from southern China to its neighboring countries. If England or France were to colonize Siam, the winner would gain much more influence and power over the other by preventing other countries from using the trade route, making resource harvesting much more difficult. The world's wealth and power would have shifted and history could have been different from what we know. Second, preventing a large war. Before Siam could be colonized, a grand-scale war was inevitable. Siam sat at the sweet spot between England's and France's power. The tension was already high. No country was daring enough to blatantly invade. With the number of England and France colonies, this battle could have caused massive damage to both sides and the rest of the world. As the battlefield, Siam would have been obliterated by England or France and then colonized by the winner. And how did the colonial period impact Thailand? The most obvious impact was the territory lost. Siam had lost its territory to England and France many times resulting in 481,600 km square of land lost. The remaining 513,600 km square would later on become Thailand. Another impact is on the culture. To modernize the country, King Chulalongkorn adapted various cultures of the Europeans. These cultures include clothes, dining etiquette, especially fork and spoon, and karst. The last impact was on the administrative side. Even though Chulalongkorn centralized his power and saved the capital, the Thai would grow to hate the centralized idea later. With the world open, more and more Thais went to study in Europe. These people saw the new world, learned new cultures, and brought them back to Thailand. And one thing they brought back was the democratic mindset. In 1932, a democratic revolution led by westernized bureaucrats and a tradition-oriented military happened. As a result, from absolute monarchy, Thailand officially became a constitutional monarchy with a prime minister as the government head. Now you know. You have a question. 